Hello, my friends, and welcome to the wonderful world of Photoshop, where we're going to create all kinds of crazy things. Our very first project together is going to be creating a Mr. Potato Head. Very silly, very fun. Um, for this particular project, we're going to stick with the size of a typical piece of paper, so 8.5 by 11. And you can choose whether or not you want that portrait or landscape. It'll just swap your sizing around. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create takes me to my very first document. Um, something fundamental to understand about Photoshop, if you did not take il digital illustration in middle school, is Photoshop functions with layers. Layers are basically like different pieces of paper stacked on top of each other that are transparent. I can put different things on different layers without them having to interact. So my background is typically layer zero. Um, usually you will start out with a lock like that. I like to be able to work on my background. So I go ahead and unlock that. Anytime I need to add a new layer, there's a very convenient plus sign that says create a new layer. So I'm actually going to do that so I don't disturb my background. If I were painting, maybe I'm doing big swirly blob, but oh no, I need to erase this part, whatever. I can do that without messing with this part. Let me show you what happens if you are painting directly on your background. I'm going to make that a bit smaller. That's if you're erasing directly on your background. That punches a hole in it. That was the surprise. So if I try to erase just this, it messes with everything else on that layer. So I'm going to avoid that. But right now we're not painting. We are going to be manipulating photos. And you will need to gather some up either from Google or other royalty-free image sites. So I'm going to go to my Google and I'm going to go to images. However, a couple important things as you start to search. You, one, you do not have to use a potato for your head. You can use any other suitably round-sized fruit or vegetable. It's up to you. I think for this one, I'm going to do... Mm, a watermelon. Now I get all kinds of nice stuff for this. When you were working in digital art, it is always better to have a large image and scale it down rather than go the other way. Let me show you what happens when I try to scale up a really small, bad image. If you hover over your images, see how those numbers popped up? That is the pixel size. So while that image looks small right here, let me go ahead and show you the difference. If you save directly from this frame, it's going to give you a different size than if you went to the direct link. So there's my watermelon. That's how small it is. So if I go to put this in Photoshop, it's currently in my downloads folder. Or nope, it's on my desktop. If I go to put this in Photoshop and stretch it, there it is there, Command T to stretch, it gets kind of pixelated. We've got all this blurriness over here. We don't want that. So I'm actually going to Control, right click. I'm going to go to the actual image address, not the preview of it. I would hit copy there. Command V, and it still takes me to the very same small one. So always be double checking that. Another way you can filter for this when you're searching is go into your tools and you choose large for your size. That will filter out any super tiny whiny little pictures that won't be useful to you. So I want to pick a picture that's mostly just the watermelon, not uh, anything artsy. Just a plain old watermelon. Watermelon sugar high. We're going to talk about what backgrounds like that mean in this class. That is a transparent file, but I don't need that right now. Let's just go with this watermelon. So I'm going to go ahead, copy the image address. There we go. That's a nice big watermelon. I'm going to save that image. You may want to create a folder on your desktop. And I'm going to just drag and drop that watermelon. It's actually on my other screen. I'm going to drag and drop that watermelon into Photoshop. 
The other thing I would suggest you do, ladies and gentlemen, to make your lives a little bit easier is to change the color of your background so you can see how to get rid of the white. And the way you do that, you select your layer, you go up to edit, fill, and obviously I don't want white, so maybe I want, I think red will make it nice and easy to see, but not a eye gouging red. There we go. So I can very clearly see what I need to do to isolate my watermelon. 